Hello everyone and welcome to the Safety Artisan where you will find instructional materials that are professional, pragmatic and impartial because we don't have anything to sell and we don't have an axe to grind. Anyway, let's look at what we're doing today which is preliminary hazard identification. Okay, so we are looking at the or well, one of the first actual analysis tasks in MIL standard 882 ECHO, which is a system safety engineering standard from the US government. Uh, and it's typically used on military systems, but it does turn up elsewhere. And preliminary hazard ID is task 201, task 201. So what we're going to cover in this session and uh, by the way, sorry, I forgot to say I'm recording this on the 2nd of February 2020. However, um, the MIL standard is, has been in existence since uh, May 2012 and is still current. So um, it's a, it looks like sticking around for quite a while, this one. So um, this lesson isn't likely to go out of date anytime soon. OK, so what we're going to cover is um, Quoting from the task, first of all, we're going to look at the purpose and the task description. We, the task talks quite a lot about historical review, so I think we've got three slides on that. Recording results, um, putting stuff in contracts, and then I'm adding some commentary of my own. I mean, I'll be commenting all the way through. That's, that's the value add. That's why I'm doing this. Uh, but then there's some specific extra information that I think you will find helpful should you need to implement task 201. And this uh, session is we've moved up one level from awareness and we are now looking at practice at being equipped to actually perform safety jobs and do safety tasks. So let's move right along. So the purpose of task 201 is to compile a list of potential hazards early in development. OK, so two things to note here. Uh, it is only a list. It's very preliminary. OK, and I'll keep coming back to that. If this is important. Remember, this is the very first thing we do. Uh, that's, a, that's an analytical task. OK, there are planning tasks in the 100 series. But actually, some of them depend on you doing task 201, OK, because you can't work out how you're going to manage something until you've got some idea of what you're dealing with. Uh, and we'll come back to that in later lessons. So we're, uh, it's a list of potential hazards that we're after and we're trying to do it early in development. And I really cannot overemphasize how important it is to do these things early in development because we need to do some work early on in order to set expectations in order to set budgets in order to set requirements and to uh, basically get a grip get some scope on what we think we might be doing for the rest of the program so this is a really important uh, task and it should be done as early as possible and it's okay to do it several times, okay? Um, because it's an early task, it should be quick, it should be fairly cheap. We should be doing it just as soon as we can when we've got, when we're at the conceptual stage, when we don't even have a proper set of requirements. And then we redo it thereafter maybe. And maybe different organizations will, will uh, do it for themselves and pass the information on to others. Um, and we'll talk about that later as well. OK, so the task description, it says the contractor shall actually forget about who's supposed to do it. Lots of people could and should be doing this uh, as part of their project management or program management risk reduction. Because, as I said, this is so fundamental to what we're doing for the rest of the safety program and indeed maybe the whole project itself. So what we need to do is examine the system shortly after the material solution analysis begins 
and compile a preliminary hazard list or PHL identifying potential hazards inherent in the concept. OK, so that's what the standard actually says. A couple of things to note here. Um, saying that you start doing it after material solution analysis has begun might be read as implying where you don't do it until after you finish doing the requirements. And I think that's wrong. I think that's far too late. So to my mind, that is not the correct interpretation. Indeed, if we look at the last four words in the definition, it says we're identifying potential hazards inherent in the concept. OK, so that, I think, gives us the correct steer. So we've got a concept, maybe not even a full set of requirements. What are the hazards associated with that concept, with that scope? And I think that's a good way to look at it. OK. Now, this task places a great deal of evidence or emphasis, sorry, on review of historical documentation and specifically on reviewing documentation with similar and legacy systems. So an old system, a legacy system that we are maybe replacing with this system, but there might be other legacy systems around. Um, so we need to look at those systems. The assumption is that we actually have some data from similar and legacy systems. Uh, and that's a key weakness really with, with this is that we're assuming that we can get hold of that data. Um, but I'll talk about the issues with that um, uh, when I get to my commentary at the end. So we need to look at the following and it says, you know,